God has me sitting completely still, completely still, and I don't like it. I don't like it. Um, sometimes when he has you sit still, it's for you to know that he's God. I'm talking to God and I'm like, God, okay, I gave up all my possessions. I did everything I was supposed to do. Like I have all the answers. Like God, what do you want from me? What's up, what's up YouTube world? It's your girl Ivory coming at you guys with another video. And yes, I don't have no funny intro. I don't have no bloopers for you guys. Probably along the line I might say something messed up or whatever. But I just wanted to come to you guys and give you an encouraging word for those who are sitting still right now. Like, <sighs> give you a little bit of my testimony still. It's a lot going on in my life right now and I probably need the most answers from God at this moment. And God has me sitting completely still, completely still, and I don't like it. I don't like it. Um, I just like to get results, get answers, have something, and God is just making me sit still. But sometimes when he has you sit still, it's for you to know that he's God. And it's making a lot of sense to me now that why he says in the Bible, be still and know that I am God. Like, be still and know. Because that's what happens when you're sitting still. You know that it's God. You get to know means to experience. When you're sitting still, you're experiencing God. That's what I got from that. Um, I was driving around today. And I'm talking to God. And I'm like, God, okay. I gave up all my possessions. I did everything I was supposed to do. I cut off everything. Like, what else do you want from me, God? Like, what else do you want from me? I'm not... <sighs> I'm not feeling like I have all the answers. Like I can go any route I want to go, but I'm just not feeling like I have all the answers. Like God, what do you want from me? And I started to go into this rant, like, okay, God, I don't, I want to do this and da, da 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 And I'm going into this rant and I'm getting so frustrated with God. And I started to cry and I'm just like, God, why do I even exist? Like, why do you even have me here if everything is going to be pain, if this and this and that, like, blah, 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 blah. And I'm going down this rant and still silence, silence. And <laughs> I remember about a month ago, I was watching Kevin Ewing and he was saying how, um, not Kevin Ewing, Prophet Lovey on um, YouTube. And he was talking about how um, Job already knew ahead of time what was going to come because in the end in job 3 he says what i feared the most came finally came upon me meaning you were already in expectation of this bad stuff happening because you got it in your head and your heart and your spirit that this bad stuff is going to happen and once it happens now you're like dang what i feared the most has come upon me da, 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 da. and you ran to god but you don't understand that you created it because you feared it you already felt that this was going to come or happen to you. So you created the atmosphere to welcome it. And I heard that about a month ago and I was just like, dang, I never knew that about Joe. I never looked at it that way, but he's right. So today I'm going through my rant and even though nothing's, I'm just sitting still and I don't like sitting still. It's nothing that God is doing. I'm not going through any punishment or nothing. It's just, I'm used to being on the go, having something to do. I'm used to, I could pull up on somebody. I'm used to, or I can go out on a date right now. I'm used to, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm used to having some motion. And it's like, once I released everything and told God I would just follow him and serve him, I cut off all those things. You know what I'm saying? I didn't look back. So now I'm just going forward in stillness. And I'm not going to lie. It was driving me crazy because I'm like, dang, God, I can't date. I can't do this. I can't do that. Da -da 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 -da. Like, I don't, I don't like these rules. and da -da -da. But God's just pressing me molding me, you know what I'm saying? Because now he's going to teach me in his perfect stillness what to do. Most importantly, <laughs> he's been teaching me his patience. And I decide, okay, I'm driving around and I'm like, let me just go home and pray because I'm doing all this complaining, but I need to probably pray. I need to, I need to feel God. I need to touch to him in his garment. I need to experience him. So I go in my closet I turned it into my war room <laughs> and I prayed, you feel me? I prayed, I sat on the floor and I prayed to God until I literally ran out of breath. My mouth was dry, my stomach was empty. 
tears all in my eyes. I come to you today looking the same. Like I didn't make nothing look cute or nothing. I just got off the floor praying. You feel me? And I just, God is dealing on me with just accepting who I am and how he created me beautifully. So everything ain't glitz and glamour all the time. You know what I'm saying? And I got on the floor and I prayed with tears in my eyes. I prayed till I couldn't think of nothing else to say. I prayed until I had no more wind to catch up with the words that I was saying. I prayed until my stomach felt like my abs was doing crunches. I prayed. And I just kept praying. I prayed for others. I prayed for myself. I prayed for God to just visit me, his Holy Spirit, his presence, his remembrance of me. I prayed and I prayed and I prayed for his love, his abundance, his mercy. I continue to pray on that floor for God to give me a word, give me an answer, give me something. And I continue to pray. And I'm like, God, well, whoever my husband is, whatever. And I pray for strength in that ministry, strength in that marriage. I just continue to pray for the things that I don't even see. Just in my faith, praying, strengthening my faith. And when I got up off the floor, I continued to listen to worship music and I stayed worshiping God. And then I said, God, give me a word. And I opened my Bible and it opened to Job 3. I don't know if y'all can see that. But as soon as I opened my Bible, <laughs> opened up to Job 3. And I said, God, I'm all, I pray. I said, God, before I open this Bible, I pray that you give me a word. You know what I'm saying? Give me something from you. Give me confirmation, Father God. Give me something to let me know that in my prayer, nothing was in vain, Father God. Give me something to let me know that you are here, your presence. Give me scriptures from your heart, Father God, for me. And I prayed that. As soon as I open the Bible, it's on Job 3, the speech of Job. And in Job 3, he's pretty much going down the list cursing the day he was born. You know what I'm saying? He was like, let that day perish. I hate this day. Why did I even exist? Why did my mother even have me? Sound familiar? <laughs> Why did my mother even have me? Let this day be calamity. Let it be darkness on the earth. Da, 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 da. And in that, it gets to Job um, 25, right at the end of Job 3. And it says, for the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me and that which I was afraid of is coming to me. And I was like, why does this sound familiar? <laughs> because I had already heard it a month back. It's crazy how God prepares you for things unknowingly. You, you're not even aware of why you're watching something, why you was led to watch something, and then you go through it. And then as soon as you go through it, he give you the confirmation with the word. And I got the same confirmation that I had watched a month ago. And what I got from that was, Ivory, you are fearing not having an answer. You're fearing that nothing's going to happen. You're afraid that God won't talk to you. You're afraid that you're doing all this stuff on YouTube. You're ministering to people. You're doing it and it's going to be in vain. You're afraid that God is just going to leave you in a season of stillness. And because of that fear that you fear so much, that's what's come upon you. God is still. Because how can he be there when you're afraid that he won't be there? You feel me? So... I wanted to make this message for those chosen ones, those ones who are stepping out on faith, you know what I'm saying, to do the will of God and honor God and all that they do with their gifts, you know what I'm saying? I want to tell you that even in God's stillness, make sure that you have no fear. Make sure that you actually get in the word from God, listening to God, because sometimes our stillness is just due to our own fear. Our fear that are we making the right choice? Are we choosing the right thing to do? Are we following the right path when all my friends that I used to know are over there looking like they succeeding, looking like they doing great? Or am I, am I, am I? Like you're going through all of that and that is what's consuming you and the Holy Spirit can't come in because your fears are so big and so profound that that has become your reality. And when I opened my Bible and I saw that, I just knew then that <laughs> what I feared the most is what I'm actually making my reality. So I want to tell somebody that same thing, like, be careful what you fear. You have to trust and know that God is God. You can't just say it. You can't just preach it because they will be tested. The enemy will test you. You want to be Job? The enemy will test you. You want to be abundant? The enemy will test you. You want to walk in your gift and minister and save souls? The enemy will test you to see if it's really true. If I take all these things away and that fear is there, I wanna see what really happened. You're gonna get afraid. You're gonna panic. You're gonna think God ain't here. God ain't helping me. God ain't, that's what's gonna happen. And then I got room to play with your feelings, play with your mind, play with your soul, play with your spirit because you gave me fear. 
And I'm the prince of fear. <laughs> That's how the devil feels, you feel me? So you have to understand that how you think and how you move in Christ will determine your outcome. You have to think thoughts of Christ. You have to think righteous. You have to put on the full armor of God. You have to keep yourself in his word. Because time and time again, it is going to be tested. The enemy is going to test you. I'm still sitting still with no answer, but I change my stillness to stillness in God and not stillness in fear. It's a big difference. So I want to get that to you. I don't got much to say. Read your Bibles. Don't laugh at mine. It's old. I've had this for many years. But read your Bibles. Stay in the Word of God. And understand in stillness, you need to be in stillness in God, in Christ, and not stillness in fear. Love you. Later.